Adam, there's one right there beside me. When you are substituting at the rate that, that you've been doing that, what are the challenges just kind of keeping track of where you are and who needs to come in, who needs to sit? Like, how do you navigate that during the game? Yeah, that that's um, takes a whole staff to do that, certainly. You know, but I think a lot of that is is feel and, and kind of instincts. You know, and, and the way our guys are playing, they're playing really, really hard. And sometimes it's obvious when you see guys needing needing a break. And in that moment, you're evaluating specifically what your team needs. Uh, you're also evaluating who's on the floor for them. And you're evaluating, you know, um, what have we practiced from a lineup standpoint. So there's a lot of, a lot of different thoughts that go into that. So I, I think you gotta trust your instincts, but our staff's provided great input in that regard. But we had some, we had some unique lineups last game. And some of that was just, you know, I talked to the staff part, part of the way through the game and felt like, hey, we could, you know, be prepared because we could do this, you know, if, if, if it comes up, we, we may go with it. And we hadn't really practiced. I think we had Evan, um, Zed, and Felix together, you know, for a stretch. So just felt like, Rebounding has been so important for us in, in the physicality on defense and felt like the, the, that can call for something like that. How much of that, like you said, are you able to actually practice? And how much of that is like, hey, maybe we haven't gone over this, but we trust that you can go out there and you, you can you can do this because I'm sure you can't plan for every single you know, possibility as the game unfolds. So how much can you practice that and how much of it does have to be just on the fly, trusting that your guys can, can adapt to a situation? Yeah, I think more of it is, is trusting them and their ability to adapt to the situation. But part of this time of year, you know, specifically, and you've spoken about who the mentors to me have been, right, in my career. So I'm leaning on just things that I've seen work. Um, and, and certainly, you know, Coach Holtman's been really influential in that. But we can't over-practice right now either. Mm -hmm. And we, we have to, there has to be a, a freshness physically and mentally come game day. Uh, we're practicing hard and things, but we're, we, there isn't enough time, in my opinion, to cover everything and all the scenarios. So I mean, you just gotta, you gotta trust guys. It's our job to help them be in position to succeed. But in that case, we, you know, we went to an offense that was simple at that time with that lineup and one that guys could be comfortable in, and you know, I, I think to some degree, didn't overcoach, you know, in, in that situation. Um, so, just uh, obviously, you know, you had some hiccups in the transition defense against Michigan State, but the, the half court defense um, felt like a, a huge step from the Minnesota game. Just how replicable is that going forward, and uh, what what do you like in, in that area that you saw? Yeah, there there were certainly some some issues at times in the transition defense, but Michigan State is elite in that area. So I actually I felt like we did some things really well in regards to just limiting their opportunities. And it, I know the, the points they got in transition were still kind of high, but it certainly could have been a lot worse. Um, as far as the half court goes, I, I I even going back to the Minnesota game, I felt like our half court defense had was really good for stretches. We just didn't finish plays with a rebound or a loose ball or, you know, maybe at the end of the shot clock assignment against Michigan State, you know, we grew from that and, and we were significantly better. And listen, it, in order to win moving forward, that like we have to be consistent in that area. So we talked a lot about that post Minnesota and through film practice and our guys deserve a ton of credit for making the adjustment this um i, I know you know it's a, a focus on one day one game at a time but also you know having something to play for is you know helpful for teams too is has there been any discussion about you know making a run to the ncaa tournament here you guys maybe aren't completely out of the picture but it's kind of a narrow road 
Yeah, I think as long as there's a Big Ten tournament, we're not out of the picture. Right. And I think our guys, you know, our guys have done a great job in the last couple of weeks, not, you know, looking too far ahead, being in the moment. But we've also talked about each opportunity as it's presented itself. And and listen, tomorrow night is a huge opportunity. It's an NCAA tournament team. It's a, it's a really good team coming into our building, a team that beat us once already this year. So there's there's plenty of, of motivational elements to this game. And we're not shying away from you know, whatever that reality may be, but we're not gonna, we're not spending a lot of time and energy on, on, you know, talking about some of these what if scenarios. It's, it's more just focusing on handling this opportunity as best as we possibly can. And then we'll, we'll prepare for the next one after that. But from the, from the, you know, since kind of this, this has happened and this adversity that our guys are going through right now, these last couple of weeks, They've been really good at, at just staying focused on one day at a time. And then last one for me, uh, going off of that, you know, you talk about this opportunity. Uh, what corrections have you made uh, since the Nebraska game in terms of perimeter defense? Because obviously that's something that, that hurt you guys in, in Lincoln last time. Yeah, well, well, I think Nebraska certainly has, you know, probably five different players that are capable of scoring 20 or more points on a given night. I bet they're they have some some real offensive firepower and you know but our, our defense is, is improved it, we, like we talked about yesterday they're playing really well and they're a really good team and so are we and we're not the same team we were at that time now either are they but we've you know we need to be we need to continue to be about the stuff that we've been about these last kind of couple of weeks and guarding the ball, keeping the ball in front, ball screen, our ball screen defense, is, it, all of that's gonna be really, really important. And we need to guard the three-point line. I mean, that was, they shot it extremely well, you know, at their place against us. And some of that was some things, some breakdowns we had, some of it was them just making some really, really hard shots. But yeah, we gotta, our perimeter defense is gonna be important, absolutely. I was chatting with Darius Garland yesterday about his commitment, his recruitment, and all that. He said uh, when he committed, he teared up. We saw the tears after the Purdue game, and I'm just wondering whether it's public or private, what is it about these big moments that uh, bring that reaction from him? Yeah, Darius and I maybe have some conflicting. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we fully agree. I, I think he might have teared up a little bit too. Um, no, I'll never forget sitting there and him saying, deciding he wanted to, you know, come play for us at Vanderbilt. And, you know, recruiting is, it's hard. And we were able to really build a connection during that recruiting process. And, you know, I think we just had, we built such a relationship that, that it, it was just, it was, it was an exciting time. Um, for me, I think, I've, I've tried to do you know this specifically and really everything in, in coaching with a great deal of passion. And I'm not, a, like sometimes that, that passion comes out in, in different ways and I, I, don't, I don't have a problem sharing that. I just, that's just who I am. Um, and we've had some, the last couple of weeks, we've had some what I, I would say certainly calls for some emotional moments. And Darius is great, he, he's, I'm so happy for him, his family, what he's been able to accomplish, um, and he's he's just getting started. Like, in, in as good as he is, you know, on the court. I guess I can't call him a kid anymore because he's a grown man. But he's like he he's he's an even better person. And I'll never forget being at at the draft hearing his name calls, especially at that time, we knew, we knew, my wife and I knew we were gonna be at Ohio State and he gets to come to Cleveland. I, like that moment was was awesome. But yeah, that when he committed, it was, there might've been a, it was probably because his mom or dad started it and hugged me. That's probably when the, when the tears maybe started a little bit, a little bit. I know you talked about Jameson on Monday, but can you give us an update on kind of where he stands for, for tomorrow? Yeah, I think Jameson's progressing well. Um, and 
you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see as it gets a little closer, but I, I don't anticipate, you know, any issues there. But he's, he's worked, he deserves a ton of credit. You guys didn't get to see it, but we, we, were, we stayed on the road. He worked so hard to try to come back. Um, and I, it was impressive. I mean, he was, he and our, our trainer, Tony, who's done an unbelievable job. Like they were like best friends, inseparable. It seemed like when you saw one, the other was right there for whatever those those kind of forty eight hours, um, and it just felt like for Michigan State, we just didn't quite have enough time. Yeah. Uh, Chris talked throughout the season as, as struggles were happening about Bowen and his three point shooting because some of the guys had talked about how what he does in practice. I think you've even mentioned at one point you you'd like to see him get more minutes, but he continues to not get consistent minutes. And I've been asked a few times like. Why isn't he good playing more? And I don't have a, a good answer. Is there things that he doesn't do that maybe we don't see or things that we should see that are keeping him from playing more, especially as you've opened up the rotation? Yeah, I, I think, you know, specifically last game, wanted to give him some, some opportunity because Jamison wasn't in there yeah. and, and that certainly. But listen, Bowen, Bowen can, he, he can really, really shoot. And I think the impressive thing is Specifically, in the last you know probably couple months, he's really grown in some of the other areas that he needed to grow to. He's gotten physically stronger. Our, our strength coach, Quinton Banks, has done a, a great job with with our guys, and he's a he's another example of a guy who's gotten stronger and he's moving a little better. Um, you know, and I think Bowen, as he's gotten a little more experience, it's, it's helped him just you know with his basketball instincts too, and so. He's he's done a great job staying ready. I, I anticipate him, you know, making some big shots, you know, and, and, and knocking down some shots throughout the rest of this season. Some of this is just purely the flow of the game and trying to trying to determine on the fly what exactly we need in that moment. And I think his defense has improved. Um, and like I said, his physicality has improved, which helps on the glass. But there, there's been times where it felt like maybe rebounding was more important. Or, or you know things like that, and I'm not sitting here saying I've got it, gotten it right all the time either. You know, I think that's the part where and our, and our staff has been awesome. It just like we've we've worked hard together to kind of process these things, but yeah, we're we're figuring this out a little bit too. But he's done a great job staying ready, and he will. I know he'll continue to do that, and I anticipate him making some making some shots down the stretch. Jake, the hot topic in hoops this week has been poor story since the Wake Duke game this weekend. Just wondering your thoughts. You see, you know, we had the women's game with, you know, Iowa and Ohio State here where that was also an issue a month ago. But what's your thought on that? And students getting to celebrate and just the whole, it's been going on in college basketball forever. There's some wild ideas about what should be done these days. Yeah, I, I think we can all agree that, you know, what happened at Wake Forest like that that situation we got to find a way to prevent that right like just the how fast everybody got on the court and i think got people were even on the court before maybe the buzzer completely completely hit i'm not smart enough or <laughs> like nearly experienced enough to figure out what the perfect solution is i think there's an element of of court storming that you don't want it to entirely go away it does seem to be happening more frequently um, and, and maybe not quite as special as what it once was. Uh, it seemed to be a time where it was like reserved for just the elite of elite wins. And I think back to what we've had here, like, you know, you got no, you know, top three, top three wins, you know, like that, I think. But some of these where it might be a, a top 15 or top 25 team or, you know, something like that, I, I, I would probably say hopefully Again, those people that are much smarter will figure out a way to make it make it work. Um, but I, I think reserving it for those really special moments, like th that's that's something I would imagine students, you know, probably remember for a long time. You don't want to fully like remove that from the equation. But the the player safety thing is real, and you know, again, there, I'm sure there's a way to to figure it out. But like. The feeling we had at our Purdue game, I mean, I, I wouldn't want our guys or our fans not to be able to experience that either. So, 
I don't know what the answer is, but I think there's certainly, we got to prevent at least what happened in that, in that situation. No, I get it. I, I like what you're saying about a code, like top five, top 10, and you're unranked. <laughs> and if not, like, boom, we're going to, we're going to talk about you bad if you go and do it. But uh, one thing about just being a few weeks into this run now, since, since you got the interim head coach label, from the outside, it looks like it suits you well. And just any thought about, you know, two of your first three wins, you've taken down Matt Painter, who's done what you've done, and Tom Izzo, who I know Holt, Holt always spoke very highly. He's a mentor. I don't know what your relationship is with him, but just how does that make you feel about doing this and with an unknown future, but this is for me? Well, I think we, I think it's important that, like, we did that. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't me. It was, like, the, the people in our program, the players, our staff, I haven't fully had time to step back, and I, I, there will be a time and place to do that, to really, you know, recognize, I think, what's been accomplished in the last couple weeks, as far as just, you, you mentioned Hall of Fame coaches, you know, road win at Michigan State and the time it had been and done that. Like, I'm not trying to minimize how, how great those things are. We don't have time to really sit back and think about that right now. And um, I asked our, I, from the first day and when, when all of this happened and all the different emotions that were going on, I asked our guys to keep the future in the future because of the opportunity that we still have left. And I, I'm committed to doing that too. And I have to, I have to lead by example with that. So there'll be a time and place to sit down and, and reflect on the flight home. Cut me and a couple staff guys. Like we did watch that last clip of Dale's three about 20 times. And every time you're looking at like a different guy on the screen and seeing the reaction. And, and that was fun, certainly. And our guys, our guys deserve to, you know, celebrate those moments. Um, but, I'll tell you this, we practiced well yesterday. It wasn't like like our guys were focused. They practiced hard. We still have a lot of opportunity left. So maybe you and I will sit down and we'll have a drink and we'll talk about sometime after the season what those men and how, how it was. But right now I just now's not the time, you know, for us to do that. I think we gotta stay focused on the task at hand. So I and I, I understand that's not probably the the answer that people want necessarily, but I, I just, that's what we're doing. Our players are doing it. We got to do it. And yeah, I, I was more in the moment. I was thinking like, man, that's Hall of Fame Tom Izzo across the sideline. Like that stuff is, it, it's a little surreal, you know, to some degree. And I, I don't, I don't get to fully appreciate that right now for sure. And some, sometime we will, but now is not the time quite yet. You said that after the Michigan State game too about a question. Like I know it's not the answer you want to hear. Where, why? Why? Like where? Where's that come from? Yeah. I, well, I think I think to some degree, there's you know, people may may be looking for me to speak on you know my future or speak on like these 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 things, these stories that, that could exist like a, like a Hall of Fame coach within kind of what we're doing as a team. But I think the focus for me, I'm just, I'm fighting personally to stay focused on our guys, this program and this season. And I, I just, I think the timing, there will be a time for that, I guess. And maybe that's, I think that's what I mean when I say that, that there'll be a time for those things and to, to talk about those, but now is not the time for that because, you know, our guys are doing a great job with it. Our staff, we have to do a great job with it. And so I think that's what I mean. One more. Yeah. Um, Whatever you guys need. Yeah. You, were, you were talking about watching the reaction to Dale's shot. And it, it dawned on me that you guys haven't had a moment like that in a while where it's just been pure joy. I mean, Purdue, obviously, that's a big win. It wasn't a buzzer beater. You know, you had to hold on at the end a little bit. But um, to have a moment like that, where it's just joy, your guys are spilling out on the court. What did you see when you watched that clip over and over again? Was there a, did you have a favorite reaction? And, and what does that kind of moment mean to a program that has been through some tough times here recently? Well, my, I have my own personal thoughts and my, our guys were making fun of my reaction. I was gonna ask you about that 
Yeah, so I, <laughs> I explained to them, well, my initial reaction was to like, thank God and just like, and then my, I, one of the coaches grabbed me and was saying, there's still time on the clock. So then my reaction is like, go get the guys back here. We got to, you know, get our defense set. Cause, and, but going back and looking at my, then I was thinking like, all right, Jameson, what are you thinking? You know, <laughs> and he's like, well, my adrenaline, but then you could see him yeah. get a little smarter the further he ran onto the court. <laughs> um, and I, I think going all the way down the bench, I like Terrence Dials, almost like dancing in place, you know, one of our coaches, we always, we joke with him. He's like focused on writing his notes, you know, and then our managers say, you look at their reactions, but the joy, just the over, overall joy and seeing our guys celebrate, I, like that stuff is so powerful. And even when you go back and, and, and watch it, just, it just like makes you, it makes you feel good that, that these guys get to experience that. And, you know, I, I think even just the, the energy that our guys had when we landed on, on, in, on the bus talking and laughing and joking, like th those things, like, I'm so happy for our guys. I mean, first and foremost, they've, they've earned to be able to feel that way. Um, but I'm, I'm, it's, though in the moment, it, it's certainly, you know, you're not numb by any means to feeling those like in the moment we talked about, but yeah, there were a lot of difference. We had some guys running faster from to go get Dale than, than it seems like we might be running in practice a couple times. We might have to evaluate that a little bit. But <laughs> no, nah, it's it's been uh, it's been good. It's been good. Uh, yeah. So you talk a lot about how it's not just you that's creating success, but it's more of like a team effort all around. You talk about like the coaching staff too. So I'm just curious, like kind of curious, like what are some of the conversations that you're having with your staff and like how. Why is it really meshing so well right now um, with like you and your staff? Well, we've had great chemistry all year. And so, and listen, I, I know I've talked about it, but you, there's some, the collection of experience on our staff is, is, is really high. You have former head coaches, you got, um, you know, all different levels of college basketball, former players, you know, it, it's, but the, the chemistry of our staff has, it's not to it's not to say how hard it's been because I think we all just we all love Holt and he's meant so much to all of us and so process we've had to process this certainly but we've stayed together and um, I, I think that's important I think our players see that and you know we haven't we haven't sat back and changed you know staff you know like Part of my job, I feel like, is to like create space for everybody on our staff to be to be their best, and we got some 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 really talented guys. So, but we work together. We we communicate a ton. Uh, we 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 meet regularly about you know practice each day, and and where there's there's input coming from a lot of different directions. And everybody, the, the most impressive thing because because of the uncertainty surrounding all of us too. And, and what's next is the, the most important thing is like you guys have heard me say it but they're doing the same thing they're focused on serving these players in this program as well as we possibly can through the rest of the season and I, I, I just I've been so impressed with how everyone in our program and our staff certainly needs to be highlighted for that how they've been able to do that because I I, I would imagine human nature would that would not be the case but our, our staff cares about our, our players so much, and you're seeing that um, you're seeing that shine through. And I, I'm it's they again we got some high level individuals on that staff, and I think the, the chemistry's been there from day one. So that's that part's been easy. And then one more question. Yeah, yeah. I was just talking about Devin, um, just his overall improvement. So I remember like a few weeks ago, Roddy was up here and he was saying like. Back in like the preseason, Devin couldn't even like run up and down the floor like his conditioning just wasn't there. So how much of that improvement, I guess, is his conditioning, and how much like is that mostly why he's improving, or is it more like a mental or physical? Like where where do you see that like his overall improvement? I think all of those things have, have been a factor. Um, I think we're starting to see the game slow down for him a little bit, both both sides of the ball, and. 
you know, Devin's, Devin's had to, this year was always going to be a little bit of a transition period for him because of, you know, he, he, he's shifting some positionally from, from kind of who he was as a high school player to, you know, to who he's going to become, you know, in college. And he's always been tough. He's always had good feel. And, and so, you know, some of it is, it, it's, we've been spoiled here the last couple of years with some of the, the, what freshmen have been able to accomplish. And that's not, that's not the norm. Um, and everybody's journey is different. And I think Devin has figured out these last kind of six weeks how to really run his race well. And so he's playing with a great deal of confidence. Uh, we have a great deal of belief in him. I, I hope he feels that. I think he feels that. And listen, he, he's, he has been critical in, in some of these games. Obviously, his, his numbers against Michigan State were impressive. His efficiency, the timeliness of some of his, his, his baskets. I still go, like, the most impressive thing he did, though, was taking the ball out of bounds in that moment, in my opinion. So that to me showed not just the, the conditioning improvement or the phys physicality improvement or things like that. It showed just his, the game slowing down for him. And he's a talented player. So once that really happens, like there's something something special to be had there. And he's, a, he's, he's worked and he's earned the right, you know, to, to improve and play like he has. So it's, I think he's got a really, really bright, bright future and hopefully some really bright moments, you know, here the rest of this season. Jake Dennis. Thank you, Jake.